when my daughter was one, uh, we were in the US for a year. Supermarkets would sell ready-to-use icings, they would sell all the cute decorations. We used to get those store-bought cakes and then we'd ice it, you know, and uh, we just throw in all the sprinkles and all the toppers and had a really good time. But when I came back to Singapore, we couldn't find those. And it was something that we enjoyed doing, so I figured, you know, since we couldn't find those, uh, why don't I look around and bring them in? I would say that this is my dream job because I have my own store, you know, I bring in the things that I like. And the most important thing is that you get to meet people who like what you like. The cake decorating contest started because we wanted to give something back. Uh, to our students, our customers, because they've actually supported us so so loyally all these years. And we, we just wanted to give them a platform because a lot of them actually love decorating. And the reason why we thought about National Day was because being the first contest we've ever held, we wanted something to have an emotional value. I would describe Singapore as a place where you're always welcome, whether you're from outside, whether you've been a Singaporean for many generations, and uh, I mean, irrespective of color, caste, creed. So the heart concept came from that, so it, it epitomizes that, and uh, Singapore flag, so it was like a combination, heart-shaped Singapore flag. The flowers is something which immediately, when you think of Singapore, you think of the national flower, the orchids. So when I wanted the cake to be such that instantly you know it's from here. Singapore really is a place where there are many different cultures. I chose to make use of uh, buildings and architecture to show this convergence of different styles and culture. Start at the bottom level and I wanted to show Singapore as an island. We can see the sandy beaches, the sea, and then the next level we'll see some colonial buildings from our British heritage. And then we go to the next level and we see our modern skyscrapers. They're all reaching to the sky. It's kind of symbolic as to what Singapore is trying to achieve. And the fourth level, um, because it's National Day as well, so uh, one of the things that I always remember at the National Day parades from, from when I was a kid, uh, besides the fireworks of course, would be this, the helicopters flying, flying with this really huge flag of Singapore across the, across the, across the parade square. And yeah, so I, I included that as well because it's one of my one of my childhood memories of of that of National Day. When I was brainstorming for the idea for my cake, so I went to ask a lot of my friends. So, what does Singapore mean to you? Everyone was just saying the same things over and over about uh, Changi Airport, the Esplanade, skyscrapers, a lot. Oh, and a lot about the four races all our different languages, uh, religion, etc. And so I thought about it and I was thinking, I don't want to do a one that's about skyscrapers or our buildings and such, because if you take away those, then is that what Singapore is? Just buildings? It's not, right? To me, it's not. And when you say the four races, Singapore doesn't only have four races. Currently, Singapore has as I read recently, 92 races and increasing. So I figured that mm, that wouldn't work. So I asked myself, what do I really want to see for Singapore in future? So I thought, I, want, I see Singapore as a place where we are so different, so diverse, but yet we all can live together as one. And just as we are all so, we have so many different shades of colour, so many different shades of our background, but we are still red. And so that's why my roses, they are different shades of red. And because Singapore is a little red dot, and therefore I felt like I had to incorporate my little red dot in my cake. And for the ropes around my cake, um, I thought that Singapore was intertwined as one. We are so intertwined globally with the rest of the world, with all of our people. 
and we are connected in that aspect. I didn't realise how much I felt for my country before this competition. And so as I was thinking about my idea, I thought that I was really a Singaporean inside and outside. And even though I may be travelling overseas, I may be going elsewhere to live, but Singapore will ultimately be my home because I was born here. When I talk about, you know, to my mom, uh, oh, I'm, I'm flying back at this particular time, automatically I'll say I'm coming back home. So it, it's, it started as a slip on the tongue, but when you think about it, it's true, actually, that's, that's how I feel. I feel that Singapore is my home. My daughter looks forward to coming home as well. You know, I think food is a, a, a great way of enticing her back home because she can't get her cheese prata and, and you know, all the other dishes like ipo ho fan and all that chicken noodles. She can't, she can't get exactly uh, the same feeling, the same taste. Uh, abroad, so she looks forward to coming home as well. Eventually, you know, uh, we want to set up roots here again and pick off, pick up where we left off. I guess I came back because I've always felt when I was overseas that I couldn't be, you know, 100% natural. So I guess when I'm back in Singapore, I just feel that I can be myself. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm happy going to the hawker centre and just ordering a roti prata. Hey! Roti satu kosong, uh, or you know, telo satu, you know, or something like that, or kopi si siu tai, teh si siu tai. Over here, I can just be myself, you know, and it just feels just right. This is this is where I'm supposed to be. When I was overseas, I had such a craving for roti prata when I was overseas and I know that a lot of uh, Sing our Singaporean friends who are now living overseas uh, don't have access to freshly made prata because it's not, it's not easy to get. Uh, so I decided to do uh, research into a uh, uh, roti prata recipe and how to make it, how to and put up a video so that you can show people how to actually flip the prata and also because I think that it would be cool to see a, a Chinese doctor flipping prata on video. Okay. 